All right, so today we're going to look at how do we practically create an emission spectrum or um, more specifically, how do we determine the wavelengths of our spectra? So let's say, for example, we have a tank of gas here and we're going to go ahead and excite the gas. Uh, we could use this with light. We could use this with heat. We could use this with um, electrons. Let's say we bombard this with a bunch of electrons. For example, we could take um, a plate of positive and negative uh, charge and go ahead and excite it. So anyways, it doesn't matter how, but we're going to excite our atoms so that these electrons jump up, let's say up to this third level. Well, when they jump up to this third level, they're going to relax back down. Let's say they relax back down um, in two steps so that one step, let's say they release a red photon and another step let's say they release a green photon well if you were to simply look at this let's say this is your eye here right well you would not know if this was green and red or you know your brain would actually interpret this as yellow so how do you know that you're seeing a green and a red photon or maybe just simply one single yellow photon well, for that matter, how could you even figure out what the wavelengths of these individual photons are? So one way you could do this is you could use, say, a prism. Actually, I should draw the green and red, right? So let's say you have green and red, green, green and red, and your prism, it'd come in together and it would go ahead and separate them out, right? So you get red here, you get green over here. That's one way you could do it. Or, and this is the way we're going to talk about, you could use, say, a diffraction grating. So if you used a diffraction grating and we had green and red coming in, right, what would happen is those would separate out. Okay, and so in the middle, actually, you'd get that combination. So you get your central spot would be that combination, which your brain would just see that as a yellow light. But then it would start to separate that out. Okay, so real quick, quick conceptual question, which one is going to diffract more, green or red? If you said red, you would be correct. Remember, the longer wavelength is going to diffract more. So anyways, these would diffract out, and in previous videos you saw these kind of individual lines. Well, that's how we see those lines. We use a diffraction grating. We're going to go ahead and put it through, and we'll see these two bands, one band of green, one band of red. So let's do an example problem. As usual, I would like you to go ahead and see if you can solve this on your own. Um, actually, in this particular problem, you might want to just go A, and then B, and then C, and then D and then kind of watch the appropriate part in the video. So go ahead and push pause now and try that. All right, so I go, went ahead and drew this out for you. Uh, we're sending our red and our green through our diffraction grating, and we're getting our diffraction pattern over here, interference pattern, five centimeters, seven centimeters for green and red. So let's go ahead and calculate the wavelength. So letter A is really just a review question from our previous unit. So to figure this out, we want to figure out the angle first. Okay, so if you look at our picture, we have our nice little triangle here. So we're going to use our can theta equals x over L. So this would be five centimeters, centimeters, right? So 0 0.05 meters divided by one meter. Okay, solve for your angle. We're going to get an angle of, ooh, I just erased it. So it's two point something. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to do this again. So inverse tangent of 0 0.05 divided by 1 equals 2.86. So our angle is going to be 2.86 degrees. Notice that it is a small angle. So for the red, I'm just going to go ahead and use the approximation to calculate that one out. So anyways, we'll go ahead and do d sine theta equals m lambda. Um, this is the first order, right? First order here. And then d was given as 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. So 1 times 10 to the negative fifth sine of 2.86 equals 1 lambda. Solve for lambda, and we're going to get 500 nanometers. 
Okay, go ahead and repeat for red, or you can use the approximation, and for red you should be getting 700 nanometers. Hmm, I wonder how we got such nice numbers. So letter B, let's figure out the energy then of each. So to figure out the energy, we're just going to be using our E equals, let's see screen, we're going to be using our E equals HF, or, and remember F is equal to C over lambda. So we'll go ahead and use this. Um, remember, we are going to be using the H for um, electron volts because the problem asks you to put it in electron volts. And for Bohr models, we're going to usually be using electron volts. Actually, I think we're always going to be using electron volts. Um, and then our wavelength, we'll go ahead and do 500. Okay, calculate that out and you should be getting an E of about 2.5 electron volts for the green. All right, repeat that for the red. For red, you should be getting an energy of 1.8. You always want to make sure your answers make sense. Green, remember green is higher energy than our red. Okay, so our answers look like they're on the right track. Okay, letter C is saying, what is a possible energy level diagram? So remember, the problem said that at the ground state, we were at negative 20 EV. We're going to excite up to the third state and sub subsequently release two photons. Okay, now what two photons, the order of what they do, um, could be, they could be different, right? You could release red first and then green or it could release green first and then red. And that would change what you get. So I'm just gonna do it as red and then green, okay? So let's just look at the green one in particular. So the green one, if we went from negative 20, to release that green one, it must be a 2.5, right? That must be a 2.5 electron volt photon. Therefore, this level right here, let's keep going over here, this level must be 20 minus 2.5, or negative 20 plus 2.5. So this level would be negative 17.5 EVs. Okay, likewise we do the same with the red. The red one is gonna be, uh, what was it, 1.8. So same thing, we're gonna go all the way up from negative 17.5 um, plus 1.8 and that's going to get us to negative 15.7 electron volts. Okay, so that would be a possible energy level diagram. Uh, if you flip the green and the red, yours would look slightly different, but um, hopefully you can figure out that one as well. So lastly, letter D. Letter D is essentially saying, what if I want to excite this with um, a photon? So I'm going to take photon just one photon, I'm gonna send it in, I'm gonna excite it up from this all the way up to this. And then it's gonna relax back down and release two photons. So the question is, what is the energy? Actually, I think I asked, what is the wavelength of that one photon? So if you haven't answered that one yet, go ahead and take a moment to do it. So, um, let me just go over the, the most common wrong answer I see. This is what I see people do all the time. They'll say, oh, this one was 500, this one is 700, so 500 plus 700 equals 1200. So we're going to send a 1200 nanometer photon in. And that answer is wrong. Okay, conceptually it's wrong because this is energy. We're, this, we're talking about energies here, not wavelengths. And so you can't just simply add the wavelengths. In fact, 1200 nanometers, if you remember, is a lower energy than either of these. So essentially you're saying, oh, I'll put lower energy and excite it up. All right, so what we are gonna do though is we're gonna first figure out, well, how much energy is needed. So if we wanna go from 20 to negative 15, Right, we're gonna go from negative to negative 15.7. Okay, that's gonna be uh, equivalent of, what's that, 4.3? 
Okay, we could have also just simply added our 2.5 and our 1.8 because that total should add up to the total energy. Okay, and then just one more time, we'll go ahead and do E equals HC over lambda. Okay, where this time now we're solving for lambda. Okay, so H again, we'll use 4.14, 10 to the negative 15, 3 times 10 to the 8th, Oops, let's put it up, sorry. Three times 10 to the eighth, and then we'll go ahead and divide by uh, lambda and solve for it. So when you solve for lambda, you should get approximately 289 nanometers. All right, make sure this makes sense. So we're sending in 289. Remember, lower wavelength is gonna produce a higher uh, energy and so you have to produce more energy more energy to start with and then that amount of energy is going to equal the two energies that got released down here by the way what kind of light is this anyone know it's not blue this is going to be ultraviolet and ultraviolet remember is a higher form of energy than our visible light um, by the way black lights think of black lights black lights are essentially sending in ultraviolet and so if you look at clothes for example under a, a black light essentially you're sending this high energy up and on your clothes when it relaxes back down it releases those photons and that's why it looks like your clothes are glowing because it's releasing all these various colors from your clothes